What is up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Didn't film it, but I went home for Thanksgiving for the past four or five days. It was fun, just went to go see family. My family from Europe came down and uh, we just had a good time. But I'm back, I'm back in Florida. And this video, I guess this series is gonna be so cool. I've been dying to get started on modifying the NSX ever since I got it. And I've been kind of stacking suspension stuff on the side ever since. And I finally have, I think, everything that I need to get it done. Now, it's gonna be a big task. I've never done it all by myself before, but I'm willing to give it a shot. I think it's gonna be sick. It's early, went to Home Depot so that I can get some pieces to help build all of the setups and the whole process. It's very early, my my voice, my words aren't coming out correctly. Um, but yeah, this is gonna be sick. I'm gonna run into Home Depot and grab some stuff. But before we do that, I wanna to talk to you guys real quick about this video's sponsor. Before we get into today's video, I just wanted to mention this video's sponsor, Keeps. If you guys don't know what Keeps is, Keeps is a company that is formulated to prevent male hair loss. And you guys know me, my hair has started to go gray at a very early age of my life, as well as my hairline receding a little bit. Nothing really that I can do until now. Two out of three guys will experience some form of male pattern baldness by the time they're 35. The best way to prevent hair loss is to do something about it while you still have hair left. With Keeps, a licensed doctor will review your information online and recommend the right hair loss treatment plan for you. Then, your treatment is shipped directly to your door every three months. You can message your Keeps doctor 24-7 with any questions or concerns you may have along the way, and track your progress with Keeps Progress Tracking Tool. Keeps is a more affordable option because they offer generic versions of the FDA approved medication for hair loss. Prevention is key. Keeps treatments can take up to four or six months or more to start seeing results, so it's important to act fast. The sooner you start using Keeps, the more hair you'll save. If you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to keeps.com slash divine or click the link in the description to save 50% off your first order. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash divine. I want to thank Keeps for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get back to it. It appears I may have ran into a dilemma. I do not think the car will fit this. However, I'm always up for a challenge. I'm just gonna pretend that I didn't have to go back in there three more times to get this cut three more times. Back to the shop. Back at the office now. It is time to unveil all of the boxes that have been sitting in the corner here for a couple months now. Deciding on suspension for this car was a little bit tough because I want the car to be functional while at the same time uh, just looking extremely good. Um, but the solution that I picked was air suspension. Now the homies over at Airlift Performance hooked it up with an entire Airlift 3H kit for this car and I am so pumped. Not only that, but they uh, sent some swag as well that uh, I'm always pumped for. If you guys are ever in the market for air suspension for your car, Airlift is my choice. I ran it on the Soarer for the whole three years that I've had the car and uh, it was a blast. The kits are very easy to install, very self-explanatory. Their customer service is incredible. So if you guys are interested, I'll leave a link to Airlift in the description below. Now let's dig into some stuff real quick. So first off, you'll see the tank right here. This is an 18 inch flow tank. Have your fittings and relief valves on both sides here. Very nice tank. This should be just the right size for the trunk of the NSX. Here we have the 3H box. This has your manifold in it, your controller. All right. Manifold, controller right here. Harness for the controller. Very easy. Comes with instructions and an app for you to download so you can actually control your air from your phone. Now because I went with Airlift 3H, that means this comes with height sensors. And for now, I think I'm going to run this system just off of pressure. So I will be installing the height sensors later down the road just because that is a whole other debacle to go through. But uh, I'm glad that I have them. It's going to make uh, height adjustability on this car incredibly easy, very accurate, and uh, I'm pumped for that. Hopefully we won't have any weird looking ride heights like the Soarer had, um, so I'm stoked. In here you've got your line, this is 3 8 line, the same kind of line that I had on the Soarer. Got your tank fittings right in here, more fittings down in there, the harness to run the manifold and compressor. Here we have the Via Air 444C. These are the best compressors that you can get on the market. And uh, I got the dual pack, so I have two of these compressors to go in this car, which means it will be twice as fast, basically, to fill this little tank up. 
and we will be good there. Now airlift was not alone in this. I also had help from the homies over at Bag Riders. I've known the Bag Riders guys for a while. They're a super, super nice group of guys up in Vermont and they were able to help hook it up on a set of struts for this car. So NSXs don't really have a huge variety of struts. So they were able to get me hooked up on a set of universal air suspension struts for the NSX. Take a quick peek in this box here. Show you guys the struts very nice quality sleeve bags, adjustable top hats, adjustable dampening, industrial air hose. This is the jam. Bag Rider sells a ton of stuff for all kinds of air suspension setups for almost all cars across the world. And they're an awesome group of guys that I like to support. So if you guys are interested in picking up tailored kits for your cars from Bag Riders, I'll leave a link in the description as well. I couldn't have done this without these guys. I am super, super grateful and very excited to dive in. I also got a wing for the Supra too. <laughs> I know air suspension on NSXs is kind of controversial because they're like made to be track cars and all of that, but they're not winning any track records anytime soon. And you guys know me. I like my cars to look good, sound good, drive good, and all of that. So that's what this car is going to do. And I'm very pumped. that I had some tools there from when I did my work up there and uh, decided to pack my own duffel bag full of tools. So now I got my own tools down here, which is sick. All right, so we have everything here to start the trunk setup for the NSX. We got our 3 8 line here, our tank hardware, our tank fittings, the management wiring harness, the uh, manifold fittings, the 3 8 manifold fittings, uh, bleeder filter kit to keep water out of the tank, uh, tank mounts, the tank itself, the MDF we picked up this morning, electrical stuff for the manifold, the controller, the manifold, directions for the tank, directions for the harness and install, both compressors, compressor hardware, and compressor directions. Now, as I've said before, I've never done an install myself completely. I've helped, I've helped put struts in, I've helped run airlines, so I understand that stuff, but that's the easy stuff. Doing this is kind of the harder stuff, so I wanna get it out of the way first. That way, this car is still drivable, even when I'm still working on the stuff in the trunk. The shocks for the trunk are a little old, so it doesn't like to stay up anymore, so I need to figure out a way to prop this up, and then we're gonna start dismantling the trunk and get going on this. create a side setup in here, something that would sit on the left side of the car. Uh, that way I would still have the majority of the trunk. Look at that, I still have the factory safety stuff and the little factory screwdriver, look at that. Put the setup on this side, so what I'm gonna do and how I should do this is take the MDF, take the factory liner, and you can see the little curve that's right there. I'm going to get a cardboard or paper template and match that curve so that this piece of wood can sit nicely in there and that should give me the leftover that I should cut off over here for this to fit. Eventually, I do need to find a fabric that matches this Honda trunk fabric. I found it for the Soar. I can't remember where I got it, but I got to order that because um, this is going to be sitting on top of the liner in the trunk. So for now, it'll be wood, but in the future, it'll be all lined and look real nice. So, All right, so I got the template cut out. I'll just cut off the ears on this piece of wood and it should slide right into there perfectly, or uh, as close as perfect as I can get it. All 
All right, so wood cutout piece is done. As you can see here, matches the fold line here perfectly, fills this little void perfectly, and uh, now we can start going on to getting the tank all mounted. It's very convenient being able to use the liner out of the car as a measurement because obviously I know this folds up like this and that sits in there perfectly. So very easy uh, so far. And now I'm going to start getting the tank mounted up, figure out where I want that, and go from there. Last time I picked up the camera, I uh, was just finishing up the wood itself and uh, going to start mounting everything. And got a little carried away, forgot to pick up the camera. Uh, everything is pretty much mounted, ready to go. Uh, tank, all mounted up, fittings are in. Compressor, mounted up, all tight. Manifold, mounted. This is going to be its final look. Very, very basic. Was going to run both compressors, but due to them being large and the lines being very stiff, uh, I didn't get much bend out of them, so I didn't have enough room to uh, put both of them on here, but one compressor should be more than enough to power this tank. Now, I am starting to work with some of the wiring, trying to figure out the best configuration for it, because if I can get power from the engine and not have to run stuff all the way through the car to the battery, that would be amazing because that would save me a ton of time having to rip apart my interior, finding power sources and stuff like that. So I'm researching that right now, talking to a couple people, talking to Chance back home at Taylor Motorsports. He's the guy that always does my bag installs when I'm back home, but doing this one by myself. So it's a cool learning process and it'll be good knowledge to know in the future if I decide to bag another car, which I will inevitably in the future, we'll probably end up bagging another car. Plugging away as best as I can, hoping to have this thing bagged by the end of the week. Okay, so after doing some research, I found out that you cannot run it to the engine. It has to go to the battery from the bag boys themselves. So I uh, pop one of the grommets out that's in the trunk. I'm going to start to run the harness all the way up to the front of the car. Thankfully, there's a makeshift drive shaft tunnel in this car uh, that's used for the coolant lines, the battery power lines, the brake lines, all of that stuff. So I can use that. I'll take the under tray off, uh, run the wiring through that, and then up to the battery. And the only thing that I'll have to uh, take the interior apart for will be the USB for the controller. So let's do it. So I was able to find a grommet, ran the harness through there, up through the engine bay. No, you can't see that right now. Comes down, there was a uh, hole towards the bottom of the engine bay for the brake line, and ran it down through that, which puts it to the floor, and then got everything out, tidied it up, put it in the interior of the car for now. Uh, I'm gonna shut everything, get this thing on the lift, and then going to run that harness all the way to the front, make sure that all of that is good. I probably won't connect it immediately. I'll put the connection, like the connectors on, but uh, not gonna connect it to power yet. And then I just gotta find an ignition source, which could be a fuse, which could be something else. Just have to do some probing, figure out what is ignition power. But I'm gonna get this thing in the lift, get that harness ran, tidy up the trunk, and then probably call it a night. Kind of see it tucked behind there, tucked through there, zip tied here, all the way down, 
up to the battery tray right here. So last thing is the ignition source up front, just gonna find a fuse for it. And then this is the USB that goes to the controller. And I was able to find the shifter cable grommet, make a tiny little slit in there, was able to push the USB up through there. So now I'm gonna drop the car back down, figure out how to get the shift boot off and then reach in there, grab the USB cable and run it out into the interior. Coming into the interior real quick, popped the back of the center console off with the uh, armrest piece and uh, there it is. Grommet right there, USB wire out. Uh, everything is going very well, surprisingly. I'm, I'm very happy with this. Uh, so I'm gonna hide all the excess wire, zip tie it up and uh, get everything looking pretty again. And we're that much closer with the wiring being finished. I don't know about you guys, but this being my first air suspension install, it's going very well. I suspect at the end for something to go very wrong, but things are going very right right now. I'm very pleased. Unfortunately, I had to lose the cup holders that I had bought for it, but look at this. Nicely set up in here. Perfect. Never even know. I like subtle setups nowadays. You guys remember when I did the air suspension on the Soar three years ago now, which that's fucking insane. Um, we went for like the flashiest setup possible and I wanted it to be the coolest trunk setup and I experienced it and it was cool, but I never used it for its purpose. Like, I don't go to shows and I don't pop my trunk or anything like that. I keep all the doors and everything shut. So I, it never served a purpose for me and it just took up the entire trunk. So I'm all about subtle and usefulness now a days. So I'm pumped the way this is turning out. I would say 85% of the wiring is done at this point. Just have to put power and ground on the battery and then the ignition cable and wire up the compressor and the wiring is like officially done. Super simple so far. I'm loving this airlift harness. Uh, it is just very plug and play and at the very least a couple wires that you gotta crimp or something like that. But for someone that never does wiring and is very bad at it, I'm having a good time. While the car is here, I'll do the ignition wire, get these all good to go, and then move on to the compressor, and then we'll be done. Now I'm gonna get all the terminal wires set up and ready to go. This uh, little fuse will be for the ignition wire. This will be for the power wire that goes to the battery, and uh, everything else can just be crimped with these little leads and put onto their positions. So, I'm gonna get the tools. So, got these both crimped up, wired up, ready to go. So this is the power wire that goes from the power wire to the battery. Uh, the negative, I have the other terminal for that, but that's obviously in the car, I have to crimp that. And then this is the ignition wire. So the pink wire that's in the car will go into this, get crimped, and then this side is for a fuse. So it comes with a little kind of little slot that you can put into this crimp here and uh, it goes right into a fuse and you don't have to do any weird wiring or anything like that. This slides in first and then it looks like the fuse goes in on top of it and then that locks it in. So super sick, like extremely self-explanatory. Um, like I said, I'm enjoying the airlift kit quite a bit with it being the first time playing with the whole setup. Uh, I'm loving it. All right, boys, everything is done. We have harness here, grounded up here, power wire here. Everything is fused. There's fuses on the power wire and 
Right here is the ignition wire, which I was able to find in the in ignition fuse under the fuse box. So that is all good. There's a fuse on that wire as well. Everything is hooked up. I'm going to go and get the manifold and plug it into the back end of the harness. And if the controller lights up, that's in the center console, then we know that what we just did was all correct. So first shot at this, fingers crossed. Hope everything works. I just got an update that the rest of the fittings and stuff that I need to finish this will be arriving tomorrow. So that's sick. If all of this, what I just did works, then we can just keep on chugging and get all this done. All right, setup is in, plugged in, battery is hooked up, everything's hooked up. Let's see if what I just did was right or wrong. Moment of truth. Yes, sir. We got power. Amazing. That feels so good. Now, I'm gonna get this thing off the lift, put it back in its little corner. Tomorrow, I'll have more fittings to install. And then from there, we can install the struts after that. And this thing's gonna be on air. And it's gonna be so fucking cool. I'm so pumped. If you guys haven't already liked this video, be sure to hit the like button. And uh, if you guys haven't subscribed, subscribe. More of this to come with this car, future cars, my current cars, a lot of stuff. I'm tired. <laughs> chugging along again as of yesterday i left off with getting the entire wiring harness all wired up in this car tucked under the car up to the battery everything is good there uh, you can see up here here's the rest of the wiring harness ran it through the little grommet right there comes out plugs on the manifold compressors hooked up all that's heat shrinked this is pretty much almost good to go now i was waiting for this box here to come in which has my line and all the necessary fittings that I need to finish the manifold and for each strut on the car. So my initial plan was to run three eighths for this kit, but I decided against that because three eighths fills up and airs out very quickly. And that's what I had on the soar. And I was experiencing some kind of height inaccuracies with that and that's kind of why i opted for the height sensors with this setup which will get installed later down the road but quarter inch will fill up and air out much slower and i think that that will help with the accuracy of these bags filling up every single time to the pressures that i need so i forgot these boxes are identical this is the box i was waiting for so this is quarter inch line i have 60 feet of it and these are all of the necessary fittings they're all the same just quarter inch straight npt fittings so I need six of them to go to the manifold and the other four are for the struts. I'm gonna take the manifold, get all those fittings plumbed up in there, all good to go, and uh, start running some quarter inch line for the exhaust, for the tank, stuff like that. Get all that squared away. And then all that's left is installing the struts, the rest of the airline, and the rest of the fittings. straight to the manifold that is all good to go i don't have any extra fittings for the water trap right now so i'm going to order that and in the near future i will install the water trap just to make sure that no moisture gets into the manifold uh, but for the first week or two or something like that it should be okay while i wait for those fittings other than that the next steps would be to get the actual wood base uh, coated in fabric uh, that is showing up tomorrow 
And then I believe Thursday, I am going to try and get all of the struts in, get the lines ran from the struts to the trunk, get all of those secured. Everything can be mounted for the final time and then we can actually test this whole system. So, but I think that we made some great progress for less than probably 10 hours worth of work for the first part of this series. Be sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe. Check out the links in the description for airlift performance and bag riders if you guys are ever interested in airlift stuff or bag riders kits. Once again, huge shout out to those homies. I can't wait to be rocking this setup and I'll see you guys in the next video.